This video is meant to be a supplement for the Houdini courses offered at Becker College and Lesley University. And this video in particular, we are covering just a basic rigid body simulation setup. So the first thing I'm going to do is right click in the uh, scene view here, the, the object view at the network level, and I'm going to go to test geometry and add the rubber toy. And then with the rubber toy selected, I can translate it either here at the geometry level or I can go into the geometry node itself and put down a, um, it's off the screen here, a transform node. So I could do the transformation here. I'm going to go back and do the transformation level up here, or the transformation up at the object level. So I'm going to just move the rubber toy up a little bit. Uh, to position it a little above where the collision ground plane will be placed. So once I put the object at its location, I'm going to come up to my rigid body shelf and create, hit the uh, RBD objects button. And that will create another node here at the top level, which is the Autodop network. And if I go inside there, the one thing that uh, we focused on in the classes is the data transfer. And I think that's one of the most fundamental things to be aware of. So just to review what was what we were doing in the classes, the SOP path here for the RBD packed object is very important. This SOP path, and in particular this area right here that tells us the location of the node that it's referencing, that's what's important. This path needs to sync up with the node in the geometry object itself, which is here. So if I come back up to the object level, go into my geometry object, hit my layout here so I can pull this into view. So we see we've the rest node has been added, the assembly node has been added, and in the assembly node it, it's creating a packed geometry object and then the uh, DOP import node. So this is the node that needs to stay in sync with the node that's in the DOP network. And it also has a path that we need to keep our eye on, uh, which is right here. So we see object level auto DOP network, and then it's referencing the RBD packed object that's in the DOP network right there. So this path and the previous path that I showed need to stay in sync with each other. So if your object ever disappears because you've rearranged nodes or added more nodes, those are the first two things to check to make sure that uh, it's the, the references are set up properly and it's not referencing a node that no longer exists. And then uh, what we can do to give this a little more interaction is put down a ground plane and the ground plane is found in the collisions tab. So I'm going to click on the ground plane and that will add another node up here at the object level, <clears throat> which is the ground plane. And if I go into the Autodop network, we can see that the ground plane has been added as well. I'll hit the, hit the L key on the keyboard to lay this out. And the ground plane has been added on this side here. So we now have the RBD packed object, which is an active rigid body coming through here into the rigid body solver. And then we have the ground plane going through a merge and a static solver. These two nodes are not critical. We could get rid of them if we wanted to. It's really, when we use the shelf tools, it's just setting up a, a, a framework for us to possibly build a larger network. So uh, we can rearrange these sort of any way we would like. Uh, so it, it's sort of an aesthetic thing. I, I like the way it's set up here because we could we could bring in our active objects on this side of the network and then this side of the network could be our ground plane and any other static objects or colliders that we wanted to set up. But the system would still work if I just completely circumvented these nodes and went right into the merge node here and then cut the connection there and got rid of these nodes. And I cut the connection with the Y key on the keyboard. So this would work just as, as well. So uh, again, it's, it's, it's an aesthetic thing. So I'll go ahead and reconnect that the way it was. Now the wires got crisscrossed here, so I can straighten those back out by selecting the merge node 
And over here in the parameters window, I can just shuffle them right here with these little blue arrows and you see that they, they've untangled themselves. So now if I come back up to the object level and I turn on my real time playback button here and I play the animation, we just get a nice little drop onto the ground. Now this character in particular, the rubber toy is made up of individual pieces. So again, as we had discussed in class, the, the, the rigid body solver is seeing this as separate pieces. So it's just gonna knock it apart. The only way for us to keep that together uh, is to tell the, the simulation to hold it together, uh, possibly using something like a glue network, which we haven't covered yet. Uh, but a quick way to hold this together, if we just want it to stay together while we're, we're simulating it here, is to add a Boolean node. We can Boolean all these pieces back together. And I would do that in the geometry node for the rubber toy. So if I double click to go in there, right above the rest node, I'm going to add a Boolean. So I'll just type in B-O-O-L on my keyboard to bring up Boolean. And I can put that Boolean node right here and tell the Boolean type or operation to be a uh, union not intersection, but union. And now if I run the simulation, the rubber toy doesn't break apart. Now the one final thing that I, I want to point out in this video is again talking about data transfer from node to node because as I keep saying, it is a very critical thing uh, to understand that. So uh, I mentioned how the 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 geometry node and the, the DOP network node here are, are communicating with each other uh, with the, you know, from the RBD packed object in here and with its SOP path communicating with the DOP import here in the geometry network in its object mask. So we also have now a new level of communication between the ground plane and the auto DOP network. So if I go into the auto DOP network, and I find the ground plane node, we'll see that it has a, an object path here that it's referencing <clears throat> out to the uh, object that's up at the scene level. But the remember, the, as we said in class, the ground plane is a special object. It's essentially being generated in here. It's not real geometry. But when you use the shelf tool to set up your ground plane, it creates um, somewhat of a unique network here. So it puts the, it drops the ground plane into the dynamics network, which is where it needs to be. But then it then references it up here in a new geometry node. So if I go into this geometry node, we see we have the object merge, which is a great tool. Uh, this allows us to merge geometry and data into different nodes. And uh, so that's what that's doing here. If I come over to the object list, we can see its path into the auto DOP network and then to the ground plane. So it's essentially picking the ground plane out and putting it in here. And up at this level, it is simply for uh, display purposes or visualization purposes. I can turn it off, turn its visibility flag off here or its display flag and the system will still run. And even more importantly, I could, or to more of an extreme, I could delete that that node altogether, that geometry node, and the simulation will still run because the information for the ground plane actually resides in here. Now I'm getting a little bit of an error because it, it wants to reference uh, an object up at the object level that I've, I've removed. Um, so we don't necessarily need, I'm just undoing here, we don't necessarily need this object, it's for display purposes. But again, the point that I wanted to make as we did in class is that the object merge is another uh, tool that we have available in Houdini to push data back and forth between different, um, different nodes, and in this case, geometry nodes. So that's what's gonna wrap it up for this one. And I have a few more that I'll be adding to augment our lesson plan uh, for this week.